Hi, I'm Tim Lopez uh, from Teen Tiger TV, and I'm here with a uh, local author, and if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Emily Frankie. Thank you so much for having me here today, Tim. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, so, about your book, can you tell us the backstory of that? Yeah, sure. So, my story, The Ladybug Who Lived on a Four-Leaf Clover, is written in honor of my grandmother who had passed away back in June of 2021. Um, it was a hard loss for my family and I. Um, she was 83 years old. So as she was passing, I had said, you know, Grandma, can you please come visit us as, as a ladybug? So turns out that um, fast forward to January um, is actually when I wrote this story. In the notes of my phone, um, I wrote this story called The Ladybug Who Lived on a Four-Leaf Clover. And the four-leaf clover and ladybug both mean good luck. Yeah. And my grandmother was Irish. So hence the four-leaf clover, I thought. That's, yeah. that's a good that's sign. Pretty, they're they're both ironic. lucky. So I wrote this story. It took me 15 minutes to write. And I ended up saying, let me just send this story out. Let me see if I can help myself, but, you know, uh, other people and see how I can share this story and just remind others that our loved ones are with us. So I ended up sending the story out. And the next day I woke up with seven missed calls from all these different publishers. Wow. So that was crazy. That's definitely not what I expected. So about a week later, I had... Um, my publisher, um, Acute by Design from Marlboro, Connecticut, reached out to me, and she resonated with my story as her aunt passed away, and she sees her as ladybugs. So I ended up meeting with her. We connected, and my story was published in the beginning of April. Wow. So uh, were you always passionate about writing, or is it just that one-time thing of just writing on your phone? Yes. So I've always loved writing. I've always been very inspirational. I like to make sure that, you know, I like to journal a lot and kind of get my thoughts out on paper. And I think that this was a very self-therapeutic thing, especially losing my grandmother. Yeah. So after writing this story, um, I definitely will continue writing more books and resonating with other people. So uh, we heard your sister actually illustrated this for you, the story. Um, how does it feel to create something so personal with family with your family so it is such a rewarding feeling um my sister Haley frankie did illustrate this story she's a first-time illustrator as well so in our family we have a first-time author and a first-time illustrator wow. um she was over the moon when i had ended up telling my family that i wrote this story in the notes of my phone they were touched you know their wow. their hearts just went out for us we were super um, emotional, of course, as losing a loved one is never easy. Yeah. Um, and then it turns out that once the story ended up getting published and it was a real thing and we have this hard copy here today, um, it's just such a rewarding feeling. And, and being able to help the thousands of people that I have is just, it's the best feeling. Are you planning any future projects in the future? Yes. So I am currently, as I said, um, working on other books that I'm writing. I definitely want to stick with topics that will resonate with people. And I can definitely make sure that I can continue helping people down the path of of being um, compassionate and empathetic towards others. So uh, what, what's your favorite part of writing The Ladybug Who Lived on the Four Leaf Clover? So my favorite part of the story is the message that it sends out to people. Um, it's just, again, just to remember that your loved ones are always with you. It's a positive way to look at grief and loss. Um, I've been um, very honored to actually, if you don't mind, um, yeah. in this story, my favorite part is this is actually really a picture of my grandmother and I. Oh, that's sweet. Um, when I was little. And we used to actually pick four leaf clovers. Um, so I think that this story, again, is just very sentimental to me. Um, and I think that I hope others can know that their loved ones are always with them. Um, did you have any struggles writing the book or, or in the process or anything? So, no, I didn't have any struggles because it did take me 15 minutes to write yeah. the story. I think because it was such a personal story to me, um, it, I kind of just flowed with it. I wrote again it was very self-therapeutic for me it was almost like I was journaling but I had this idea of the ladybug who lived on a four-leaf clover and I think that after writing it I felt better knowing that my grandmother was with me um you know I had known that her presence was around and she was proud and, and she misses us too so I think the 
biggest battle with being a first-time author um, is being able to share and market yourself, especially because you're new to the world of being an author. I had to learn how to get published and in, in the you know ups and downs of that, but I think that overall it has been a very rewarding and, and fun experience. Do you think you're gonna write any like novels besides children's books? Are you gonna like stay on the path of children's books? I think that I can um, write children's books as well as adult books. Um, I think that now, obviously transitioning from um, you know, childhood to adulthood, I think that I could actually impact adults as well. So my book, even though it is a children's book, it actually resonates with anyone at any age. Um, I don't really like to set um, an age with that book because everyone deals with grief. Yeah. You know, everyone has lost someone. And I think it's just a story that, again, can connect with anyone. So I do hope to continue to write more children's books as I love children. Um, I do hope to continue working with them. But I definitely think that with the inspiration and the wisdom that I like to share, I would definitely like to target more um, audience as well. Have you been to like any places to read book your book to any children or people in general? Yes. So that's a great question. So I have actually been to a few different elementary schools um, around the state of Connecticut. Oh. Um, I do like to travel and I do go to schools um, as an author and I will go and, and share my story about my grandmother and about a relationship. I like to read and have a discussion about my book. Um, I also um, just read to the Cove for Grieving Children and Families in Meriden which was a beautiful experience. I was able to interact with, again, families who have dealt with losing a loved one. Um, I have also, um, you know, read to adults as well. I'm going to a senior living community where I'm able to share this. Um, I also like to give back to hospice centers, guidance counselors, social workers, anybody who, who will need to hear this story. Is there any specific future projects? I think I want to now steer away from grief. Um, I think this story is going to be one that's going to stick with me and, and others forever. Um, yeah. I do hope, again, to continue. I, I would like to finish school um, and continue working on other stories that, again, will have an impact on those who, who need messages, such as dealing with grief or um, learning that your path, you know, it's okay to walk alone and, and make your own footprints. And um, definitely messages that I feel that people will need to hear, especially in a world like today. Yeah, it's pretty. The world today is kind of different in a sense. Like, it's not, it's not the same as before. I think a lot of people are very isolated, yeah. unfortunately, which has happened, you know, due to everything that's happened in this world. So, again, I do like to be able to share messages for those who will need this, especially in a time of how we're living. And I hope to just continue to make a positive impact on, on those who will need it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, especially my age, like they might be going through stuff that may they may need they may need this type this this book that could really change them and I that's one of my favorite things about having you know wrote this book was being able to impact those I've had many people um, actually have a conversation starter that this is a conversation where they could begin to introduce grief and loss um, I've also had a lot of people message and say we're putting it in a memory box for their loved one or you know if they have not read it to their children or their nieces or nephews or grandchildren um, there will be a time that they will need it. And I think that that's what's so important to me about this story is just being able, again, to share that message that it's okay. You know, our loved ones have passed on, but they are always with us. I like to say there are signs everywhere. Just look yeah. around. Not currently. Um, I have a few ideas in mind. Um, I definitely, like I said, I do want to continue finish school. Um, I like helping people um i do have a couple deers that i am working on so i hope to finish that soon i do have an illustrator like i said it is my sister yeah. but she also lives in a different state so what's funny is um actually how we had created this book together is when i had wrote the story she would facetime me oh. from new york she lives in new york and would facetime me at 
all hours of the night and say, you know, is this is this picture okay? And I knew that she was going to kill it because she was my sister and it was our grandmother and it was something sentimental and it was just a family affair. So I think that that was so special about this book is that we were able to create this as a family. And in my story, I actually have um, pictures of my mom and dad. Um, these actually are my parents oh. right here. This is my mom and this is my dad. And my grandmother had a cat who had passed on named Charlie, who was a white cat. So we added him. Um, and I also have an older brother. His name is Joey. Is he, is he in the book? Yes. So there is actually um, my brother... At the end of this book, I'm actually here talking, sharing that um, I always told a story about the ladybug who lived on a four-leaf clover, and I hope that it would help fill others with happiness and love and bring yeah, good luck to all. Just like you said before. Exactly. Reaching so, out to the other people. Yes, and this is my brother here. Oh. So in the story, again, it's just, it's, um, you know, I just wrote it with my heart, and there's nothing else that I could have, I just poured my heart into it, and I definitely felt that my grandmother was with me when I was writing it. Is there any socials that anyone can contact you with or see yes. future projects or anything? So I do have, um, you know, my social media platforms. I have a Facebook. It's just Emily Frankie Author. I also have an Instagram handle. Um, I like to share my events and, um, you know, my upcoming books and um, anything that I have. I also have a mailing list on my website. Um, I also have a website. It's just emilyfrankieauthor.com. Um, that way people could sign up for my mailing list and get the information right away. Yeah. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Emily. Thank right? you so much, Tim, for having me. I really appreciate it. This has been Teen Tiger TV.